today I come before you to share my heart. I have led this effort to join UCC since it began. And I believe in it and support it with all that I have. Throughout this discernment process, you've seen me lead the many congregational forums that we've had. And over this course of time, you have heard my many positive remarks about the UCC. But you haven't heard me make the case in one setting as to why I believe joining the United Church of Christ is what the Lord is leading this church to do. And that is something that you need to hear from your pastor. So this morning, I share with you from my heart, my mind, and from my spirit. There is, of course, no way to summarize and go over everything, including all the questions that we have heard and seen and discussed over the last 18 plus months. Well, I could do it, but we would be here to three or four in the afternoon. But there are some, <laughs> but there are some very broad reasons why I believe that UCC is a very good fit for our church. As I was praying and reflecting on what to preach on this historic day, I was reminded of a similar experience that the disciples had. And it takes place in the Gospel of Mark. In Mark chapter 4, verses 35 and 36, the story begins. Later that day, when evening came, Jesus said to the disciples, let's cross over to the other side of the lake. They left the crowd and took him in the boat just as he was. Other boats followed along. One of the lessons that we can learn from this passage was that Jesus was instructing the disciples that it was time for them to expand their ministry. It was a time for them to step out in faith to the bold possibilities that awaited them on the other side of the lake. A new shore awaited them for the other side of the lake was Gentile country. And while the disciples never lost their identity of who they were, and they never abandoned the foundational mission to the people of Israel, Jesus knew that it was time for them to live and minister in the greater world, beyond the familiar shores that they had always been, and beyond what they were most comfortable with. And here's the similarity. Listen to me closely. The spirit of the cross will never lose our identity as a Christian congregation whose primary ministry is to be a home for the LGBT community and the many straight allies that we have. But I also believe that God is leading us to covenant with and to participate with the greater body of Christ to live and minister beyond ourselves and to step out in faith to the bold possibilities including an expansion of our ministries that will await us as a member congregation of the United Church of Christ. And one of the reasons that I believe that UCC is a good fit for us is that UCC in its history and its contemporary settings is a model church that brings diverse traditions and uh, cultures together in unity but never requires those individual cultures and, tradi tra and traditions to reject 
their identity. In other words, what I'm saying is, Spirit of the Cross will remain Spirit of the Cross and all that it means to be Spirit of the Cross. Instead of asking their churches to become something they are not, UCC celebrates and affirms churches as they are. And they never ask a church to change who they are. The other side, that new shore, I believe that God is leading us to, will be and is a welcoming place for our church and a welcoming place for us to be who we are. UCC believes in God's extravagant welcome for all people. It is a church that believes in proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ to everyone and that all are welcome, no matter who you are, in the family of God. UCC is a denomination that teaches and preaches what our church has preached and taught for 32 years, that there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. UCC proclaims, as our church proclaims, that therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus and that everyone that calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. UCC's extravagant welcome is real. It's real. It's not window dressing as some other churches do. There is a reason that the largest LGBTQ church in the world, the Cathedral of Hope in Dallas, Texas, is a UCC church. There is a reason that many churches like us, many of them former MCC, just like us as well, have become UCC. And this includes the church that we are closest to, and that is Covenant Community Church in Birmingham. Folks, the extravagant welcome of UCC is real. But I want you to understand something else, that this extravagant welcome reaches beyond just acceptance into the family of God. It also means full participation in the life, ministry, and leadership in UCC. This full participation with no glass ceilings as a lot of churches have, this full participation with no glass ceiling is rooted in the belief that if you are good enough to be baptized in the church, then you are good enough to fully serve and minister in the church. There is no fine print, and there are no asterisks to that promise. And it's why the largest pool of LGBTQ pastors often pastor predominantly heterosexual churches. The welcome is real, folks. And a little side note for you, I just thought I'd throw this paragraph in. If we vote to join, it means that all UCC pastors in Huntsville working in two UCC churches are gay. In Birmingham, there are four UCC churches, only one predominantly LGBTQ, but yet three of the four churches are pastored by LGBTQ clergy. The welcome is real. The same is true in Atlanta. There are more LGBTQ pastors in Atlanta uh, pastoring most of the UCC churches in that city. And this is one of the reasons, this extravagant welcome is one of the reasons that the majority 
of the UCC Southeast Conference is gay or lesbian, both clergy and laity. And this UCC extravagant welcome is not something new. UCC was the first mainline denomination to ordain an openly gay minister, and that happened in 1972. Three years after Stonewall, it was the first denomination, mainline denomination, to call for marriage equality. This real extravagant welcome is also the reason that UCC is now the first mainline denomination to have women make up 51% of its ordained clergy. As we cross the lake, heading toward a new shore, we are assured of an extravagant welcome for us and assured of a place that we can serve the greater body of Christ just as we are. And I believe Spirit of the Cross wants to be a part of that. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we? This new shore on the other side of the lake will not only be a welcoming place for us, but it will be a place that shares the same beliefs and the same ministry objectives that we have at Spirit of the Cross. In the congregational forums that we've had and those that have focused on UCC beliefs and statements of faith, over and over and over, as we explain the UCC beliefs and statement of faith, you heard me and C. George say, we already teach that. UCC believes this. Well, we already teach that. UCC believes that. Well, we already teach that. And you know me as your pastor. Theology is very important to me. And if I thought that UCC was not a theological fit, we would not be having this day. It is a theological fit for us. It just is. UCC strongly believes in carrying on Jesus' evangelistic mission to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And UCC's partnership with the Christian Disciples of Christ churches in global missions is worldwide in its scope, including everything from new churches being formed to vacation Bible schools to educate as to educational efforts, to agricultural and clean water projects, to disaster relief. And as I shared with you in the Congregational Forum on Global Missions, in UCC, our church will have plenty of opportunity to join with others in making a positive global impact for the kingdom of God, way beyond the confines of 3015 Sparkman Drive. In the spirit of the cross that I know, I know that our church wants to be a part of that mission work. UCC also takes seriously the ongoing ministry of Jesus to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the prisoners and recovery of the sight to the blind, to liberate the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. UCC with its commitment to Christian social action or social justice, takes seriously the mission of bringing forth the kingdom of God to this earth. It believes in making a reality that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is a church that believes that the values of the kingdom of God need to be lived out and that we as the church are to be heralds of that kingdom, one that transcends the polar extremes of partisanship and division and resists the powers of evil. You 
WCC is a church that believes that we are to bring Christian hope to those enslaved to the forces of any earthly empire. It is a church that believes that we are to bring God into the public by being ambassadors and advocates who dare to step into places of brokenness, of inequality, of injustice, and racism, and poverty, and to do so, to step into those places armed with the self-sacrificial, non-violent, victorious power of love as shown in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And folks, everything that I just said is all in line with who Spirit of the Cross is. For we too are resurrection people. We too are more than conquerors through Jesus who loves us. We are too those who believe that every chain of oppression should be broken. And folks, Christian social action is not new to our church because spirit of the cross existence is due in part to social justice theology. The formation of LGBTQ churches was rooted in a commitment of equality and liberation for LGBTQ persons. But what I'm trying to say is a commitment to social justice is already in the DNA of Spirit of the Cross. And listen to this. And while our commitment to LGBTQ social justice issues will always be foundational to us, y'all hear that? While the LGBTQ social issues will always be foundational to us, we also need to hear God's call for us to be there for others and their issues of liberation and equality. Part of the message of Christianity is that it cannot just be about ourselves. So let's cross over to the other side of the lake. Jesus told the disciples, and as we journey to the other side and to this new shore, I believe that we'll find a natural home in which we can partner with others in doing the justice work of the kingdom of God. Here's something else that we need to consider. In Mark's account of Jesus and the disciples crossing the lake to a new shore, there is a sentence at the end of chapter 4, verse 36, that is often overlooked. And I bet you that most of us didn't even really hear it. At the end of verse 36, there's one little sentence about Jesus and the disciples crossing the lake. And that one little sentence that is often overlooked is, Other boats followed along. Other boats were with them. I think we forget that. We imagine Jesus and his disciples out on that lake by themselves. But the scripture says they were surrounded with other boats. So let me be clear about something. UCC guarantees local church autonomy. The local church autonomy is sacrosanct in UCC polity. In the congregational forum about UCC polity, we read the guarantee of local church autonomy in very clear language in the UCC Constitution and Bylaws. And as you know from the congregational forum in which we focus on the bylaw changes that we would need to make if we become UCC, you know that even in our bylaws, local church autonomy will be written and guaranteed in our church bylaws with the very same clear language. In the UCC, every church governs and directs their own affairs. Period. Period. There are and there will be no mandates from UCC that forces our church 
to do anything that we don't want to do. That's how UCC wants it. That's how we want it to. But when our church goes through rough water, and when our church faces storms, and even if we hit the proverbial iceberg, it will be good to see some other boats right beside us. Other boats followed along. Throughout the New Testament, we find examples of the early churches being autonomous. But we also find the early churches in covenant with one another. And I believe that we need, at Spirit of the Cross, that we need to get back to that New Testament model of being in covenant with other churches as this church has been for the great majority of our history. And while I'm talking about being in covenant and cooperation with other churches in affiliation, I want to address something that has been whispered and what has been wondered about. I've addressed it before in the meetings that we've had and I've addressed it in the forums that we've had. But I feel I need to do so again. I have no plans to leave Spirit of the Cross if we vote to become a UCC congregation. I don't know of anything else to do but to state that to you. I'll be the first to admit that I have many flaws as a pastor, this is not where you say amen. <laughs> but I'll be the first to admit that I have many flaws as a pastor. But one clear strength that has been consistent is my integrity. So I say it again, I have no plans to leave spirit of the cross. I don't sense that my ministry is over here at Spirit of the Cross, and I hope at least the majority of you agree with that. But we know that no pastor serves forever. There will come a day when this church will search for its fourth pastor. And when that day comes, this church does not need to be alone. Being independent, alone, and without denominational affiliation, Spirit of the Cross would find it difficult to call educated, qualified, trained, and vetted LGBTQ candidates. And even in the off chance that this church did manage to find someone, more than likely or not, they would be a part of a denomination. If an independent, non-affiliated Spirit of the Cross called them to be its pastor, you would be asking that candidate to leave their denomination, risking isolation and damage to their future ministry elsewhere, as well as their pension or retirement or insurance benefits. And the spirit of the cross that I know wouldn't want to do this because that's an issue of fairness and an issue of economic justice. It's also important to, to consider this, that if I or C. George decided that it was time to move on, you don't want us just hanging on because we had no place else to go. Or, if this church decided it was time for me to go, or see George to go, without denominational affiliation, you would be saying, I have to leave the ministry. And I have flaws, but I don't believe that the gifts that God has given me is that God wants me to leave. 
none of these scenarios that I just mentioned would be fair to me, R.C. George, or to this church. But if Spirit of the Cross is affiliated with a denomination, there will be candidates. Spirit of the Cross is and will be an attractive church in UCC. And in our congregational forum in which I dealt with that, I gave you several reasons. I painted a picture of how and why this church is a strong church and why this church will be attractive to a large group of candidates. And so I ask you, what denomination has the largest pool of qualified, educated, trained, embedded LGBTQ pastoral candidates who are held accountable and to demanding standards and fits with our theology and ministry of our church? There's only one answer. The United Church of Christ. Spirit of the Cross and his ministry are too important to find itself one day without a pastor and without a pool of good candidates to choose from. UCC will give this church the deep pool of qualified, educated, trained, and vetted candidates it deserves when that time comes. And let me add one more thing before I begin to close down. Let me just say this. The, the seminary level UCC polity, theology, and history class that C. George and I took earlier this year and was taught by Dr. Anita Bradshaw, who, by the way, this was a bonus for us, Dr. Bradshaw was a les is a lesbian, a former mcc -er herself that is now UCC, and a theological uh, professor. That class, that class that we took, and under Dr. Bradshaw, reignited my love for theology, a love that I had not experienced for years. And I believe that that class alone has made me a better preacher over the last few months. Through that class alone, UCC reignited my passion for preaching and pastoring, and I believe it will continue to do so because of the, the requirements of continuing education and training for its clergy. And I want to be a part of that. And I believe this church would want that for me and for their future pastors. For its clergy, yes, there are educational and ongoing training requirements. But I want you to understand something else. UCC is committed to offer education and training opportunities for its laity and for others who serve in their churches. And if you want that, the opportunities will be there. And in the end, Spirit of the Cross benefits from this. But I don't want our church to look at this denominational affiliation to be only about benefits and resources that we will receive. I want us to see, as Jesus wanted the disciples to see, all the many ways that we will be able to bless and benefit others. When other churches go through difficult times, I know they will be blessed to look to their life left or to look to their right and see Spirit of the Cross standing and being with them. Being a church in isolation right now, we tend not to see the actual strength and stability of our church. But hear me, and I demonstrated this in the forums, we will enter UCC as a strong church. And this church, Spirit of the Cross, is filled with gifted and talented people. And this church has a lot to offer UCC and the Southeast Conference. I know this church. I know us. I know what you are capable of. I believe in this church. And I believe in you, the people of this church. And I know that members of this church will be involved in conference ministries. 
Our members will be appointed to committee and ministry teams. Our members will be able to put to use their spiritual gifts and calling and will be able to put those gifts and calling into actions way beyond the walls of our church. We will be a blessing to others and we will be a benefit to others. And we will be involved and we will love every opportunity we are given to rise the occasion and bless and help others. That's what we've always done. Just as Jesus instructed the disciples to go to the other side of the lake to a new shore to embrace new ministry opportunities, I believe that God is calling us to do the same. As we journey, not only do other boats follow, but I also want you to remember something. Jesus himself is in the boat with us. Jesus said, let us cross to the other side of the lake. Let us cross. While nothing will change in the day-to-day -day ministry of Spirit of the Cross, and nothing will change in regards to our worship or teachings, I understand that it can be frightening to go to a new shore. Just ask the disciples. But we will discover, as the disciples did, that we will be all right. For we will always have the Lord with us. We will always have each other. And we will have other churches, other boats with us. Jesus said, let us cross to the other side. They left the crowd and took him in the boat as he was other boats followed along. As I close, I want to say this. UCC is not perfect. UCCers themselves will tell you that. But I do believe that UCC is the best fit and a very good fit for Spirit of the Cross. It is a denomination that lines up with who our church is and what our church believes and what our church practices. It is a church that doesn't mind pushing the boundaries of the status quo so that all are and will be welcome in the kingdom of God and as servants of God. It is a church that believes that the values of the kingdom of God are to be lived out so that there will be a just world for all. It is a church whose head is Jesus Christ. It is a church that is centered in Jesus and in following his mission that he gave the church to carry out. It is a church that proclaims the good news of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. And it is a church that believes that the church is best when the church works together in covenant so that Jesus' prayer can be fulfilled that they may all be one. In about an hour, we'll vote. Your church need you to stay and be a part of this decision making moment many of you have been a part of the discernment process from the beginning and you see that joining UCC is a good move for our church both for today and for the future and you are excited to vote for it Some of you may be here and you're not against it, but for whatever reason, you are a little hesitant. If for no other reason that you haven't been able to be a part of the whole discernment process, even though you love this church and you wanted to be a part of it, for whatever reason, you, you just couldn't be here all the time. You're not against it, but you're a little hesitant. If I am describing you, I ask you to trust me. 
I've been your pastor for nearly 19 years. And yes, over the years, I've made mistakes. But I have never led us in a wrong direction. So I ask you, as your pastor, to trust me. Joining the UCC will be a good step for spirit. I know I'm ahead of you in UCC. I, I kept my eye on EC, UCC for 12 years. I've been to the General Senate. I've been to the conference meetings. I've interacted with the UCC pastors and the leadership of this conference, both in public and in private, and I've been impressed with everything I've seen. See, George and I have read the books, studied its history, its polity, and its theology, and we've written a lot of papers about it, about it all. And because of our involvement, we've already fallen in love with you. But I know you, and I know that as you get involved in UCC, you will fall in love with it as well. So let us heed the call on this day to get in the boat together with the Lord and surrounded by a fleet of other boats with us. And let us go across the lake to a new shore to the new possibilities that await us. Let's do ministry together in UCC. Deacon Jamie from Covenant Community Church shared his moving and inspiring UCC testimony when we worshiped with them back in March. And I close, now this is the third time I said I'm closing, I really am closing now. I really am. I really am closing. I close by adapting his concluding words that fit our situation today. Many of you came to this church and found your home at Spirit of the Cross. Now, it's time for Spirit of the Cross find its home in the United Church of Christ. God's people say, Amen. Lord,